God bless you, everyone. Thank you for, for the heart of gratitude that we continue to push God's heart through the scripture, that we continue to grow and grow, and we continue just to believe in the vision to, to help you to discover your God-given purpose. So before we get into an announcement and some update, let's go ahead and go into the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for her faithfulness to continue to help me on this journey. Father, we pray for this service. We pray for the message. And let the message be from you, Lord. Any word, Lord, the inspiration that you put in my heart, let it you speak, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the everything that you do in, in the valley and throughout the nation, Father. We pray for the churches. We pray for the pastors, Father, that let it be a revival, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit just penetrate the pastor's heart. And I declare in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you for inviting me into your home. And as you guys know, we're, we're just very grateful what the Lord is doing through this journey. To give you some announcements as well, I know I'm not the old Jeff McHenry. We're going to continue in our sermon series on Noah's uh, uh, Ark. Last week, Alice Moreno got ahead and shared a message. And then I, I shared the first message on Noah's faith. We talked about the three lessons of uh, learning about Noah's faith. How can Noah's faith apply to our life? But we're going to continue in our in the third part series, learning the life of Noah as well. And as you guys know, on August 4th and August 11th, we're going to continue doing uh, uh, something new we've been doing for many years called Q&As about goals. We always take an opportunity to talk to middle school and high and high school students. It's a way to you know encouraging them, giving them you know motivation and, and goals, what they want to do, athletics academics, how they want to achieve in the school year. I know we have so many different, a lot of students going to be participating. Now, our Youth Connection event, you guys know we all have a Youth Connection ministry. On on Saturday, July 27, we're going to be meeting at the Power of God Ministry Church at Third Circuit Basis, Pastor Eddie Garza. Our speaker is going to be Edward Hinojosa. We have some UTRGB young adult praise and worship team. They're going to help us out with praise and worship, and we also have our youth connection team going to be out there to be helping me as well. Thank you, Jed and Adali Luna for as well. So we're going to, we're very excited about that as well. And we're going to continue the series where we've been having a conversation on Noah's Ark as well. And I was watching a lot of videos on YouTube about research about Noah's Ark. Now, back then in the Bible days, there was no engineer. There was no architect, there was no blueprint, and I felt that God gave instructions to to Noah, to guide Noah to build this ark. Now back then in the Bible days, we in Genesis chapter 6, we see a lot of, when God saw the weaknesses of, of, of men, uh, uh, imagination, so weak, God felt sorry and wanted to destroy the whole earth, but God saw that there was, he saw the righteousness of Noah. He saw the grace of Noah. So let's go ahead and go into our message. I'm so sorry, everyone, just my hearing aids. Okay. So let's get ahead. Now today we're going to talk about the life of Noah. Now remember this, the ark was provided by God through grace. The ark is, is, is a symbol of salvation. The ark was a symbol to, 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 to save uh, Noah and the family of him, Shem, and Japheth. So we're going to go in slowly to learn through this moment of the Bible study in Genesis chapter 6, and then we're also going to Genesis chapter 7 as well. And next week, we are going to cover about the dove and the raven, one of my favorite chapters. When I was 17, 18 years old, when I came to the Lord, I always liked the story about the dove and the raven. And as you guys know, here in Life Purpose Church, you know, we see as a, as a dove as a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So let's go ahead and go point number one. Point number one, I must dare to be different from, from my culture. We need to be different. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but it would be by the renewing of your mind, meaning that we need to be transformed by Jesus. We need to be transformed. See, we cannot live like the world, but only live according 
according to, to Jesus, to be more like Jesus. So I'm going to ask uh, a very special to thank you to Samantha. We're going to go into to Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. And it reads, This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Awesome. Now let's go to, to Genesis chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. Now, one of the main points I like, what Samantha said that Noah walked with God. Noah was a righteous man. Noah had a close relationship with God. A lot of time in life that we are going to have moments of discouragement. We are going to have moments when we feel rejected, when we feel isolated. But the Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 8, that we draw close to God and God will draw close to you. And I remember in a moment in my life, in my early 20s, even throughout my 20s, I, I, I struggled a lot, you know, um, walking with God. And yes, I was not perfect. Yes, I made mistakes. But now I'm 34. I, I understand, uh, you know, how life is so precious. That every moment when you walk with God because it's just, a process. So everything in life is a process. The same thing we go back to Noah. So if you go back to the story that Noah for 150 years he was just building the ark. He was just there building the ark for many years and decades. And I can see a lot of people say, Noah, what are you building? What are you doing? And I can see Noah while well, building the ark it's gonna rain, it's gonna flood. The message that what the that what the, the Noah shared throughout this time in the scriptures. And we'll go ahead and continue. We'll go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. And it says, The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved, and that that he made man on earth, and his heart was filled with pain. Yes, or remember in the days of Noah, if you go back to Genesis chapter 6, you see that God felt sorry that he created man. God felt such a burden. God wanted to destroy, but yet he saw Noah. He saw that the grace of Noah, the man that was righteous, the man that had to have a fear for God. See, we live in a generation, though, that we can't be like the world. See, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 20, let not your, our, our, our citizenship does not belong here, but belong in heaven. See, in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because we, we, we belong to Jesus. We are the children of the Most High, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. So, point number one, we talk about the culture. Talk about not, not to be like the world. Because what we'll see, Noah stand out. Noah was a man of righteousness by building the ark as well. So we're going to Luke chapter 17, verse 26. And it says, Just as it was in the days of Noah, so also will it be in the days of the Son of Man. Amen. Just like now, let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now, going back what, what I like what Samantha said in the book of Luke, just like in the days of Noah, just like back then, Noah spent many years just building that ark, spending the, 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 the message of just, he, he was being different. He was, he was stepped out of a, of a culture. We live in a culture today, so corrupted with social media, with the school district, with the youth groups. We need to be like Jesus. We need to walk like Jesus. We need to listen to the voice of Jesus in this time, just like when Noah was very close to God. We need to be close to God, just like Noah in the story. And let's go ahead and go. Here is a quote. I can only make a difference by being a different. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. This is the account.
account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Now the key word, Noah walked with God. Now this is just my opinion. When I walk with God, I listen to worship music. I have conversations with him. I talk to God. And a lot of times people ask, how can God talk to you? Well, there's four good reasons. How can God talk to you? Number one, God can talk to you through the Bible, the scriptures. See, the Bible says in Psalms 119, 105, that God's word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Number two, that God speaks through people. Me and we have conversation with people. We ask them for advice. Have them light into you. Someone that, that is a shepherd, someone that preach on Sunday morning services, you can listen to your pastor. Your pastor is someone that brings words of encouragement to rejuvenate your spirit. Someone that will, will, will guide you as well. And of course, uh, number four, God will send signs. God will send confirmation as well. And many times I see evidence that can God send confirmation in my life. You know, even when I study my sermon every every week, I take time to pray and ask the Lord to give me like an illustration or a sermon. God speaks through through my heart the words to to share as well. So let's go ahead and continue reading. So we talk about I can only make a difference by being different. Let's go to Genesis chapter 7, verse 1. The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Amen. Now I'm a little loud. Let me go back. We talk about my I'm so sorry, thank you for your patience. It's just my, my hands are very sweaty right now. I must listen to God, not the voice of doubt. Let's go to Hebrew chapter 11, verse 7. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir to the righteousness that comes by faith. Now remember this, I must listen to the voice of God, not the voice of doubt. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, but do not be misled that bad company will corrupt your character. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20, to walk with the wise, you become wise. Now, there, there are people in your life you, you, need, you can listen to or you can do life with, but there's other people in your life, it might be a bad influence in your life, or it might be a toxic, in your life, someone might discourage you, someone might, you know, pull you down, keep you from your purpose. You need to see Noah listen to God's voice. Noah ignored the voices of, of a people. Can you imagine that in the Bible that when, when Noah was building the, the ark, he eat, King Noah could easily get discouraged, but he listened to God's voice. He didn't listen to the, the voices that give him doubt as Noah. And let's go to uh, Let's talk a little more about faith. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we cannot see. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal. Now remember this, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that no eye has seen, 
no ears have heard, no human mind can conceive of God prepares for those who love him. Now can you imagine that Noah, the situation that Noah continued building that ark for, for, for decade after decade after decade. But yet, remember what we, we, we talk about that Noah is a man of faith. Noah has a characteristic of, of faith. He can easily listen to the people of doubt, but yet Noah stands firm of the faith. Noah continues to listen to God's voice as well. And let's go ahead and continue reading. So, so, um, remember that you hear God by, you, you hear God by calling, um, excuse me, by getting near to God. So remember that Noah enjoys a close relationship with God. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 17 18. I am going to bring flood water from the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wives, and your sons' wives with you. Amen. Point number three, I must do exactly what God called me to do. And let's go to... Well, let me tell us Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 6, verse 14 to 22. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door on the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I'm going to bring flood waters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wives, and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. Let's go to Genesis chapter 7, verse 1 to 5. The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found a clean animal a male and its mate, and two of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, and I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature I have made. Amen. Now we see that there's a warning here in the story that the door shut, the, the, you know, the flood that came. Now, in the Bible, that Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and of course the wives, and of course all the animals, female and male, but and they all were going into the, to the water, you know, wishing for flood, it's like a perfect thunderstorm. But we see evidence in the story that we see that now, that Noah is saved, is rescued, and we'll talk more about the ark as well. Now, remember, Remember this, and Noah persistently, he persistently followed God's will. And here's my question for you, what is your will for your life? Noah has a purpose to build the ark. Noah has a, have a purpose and a will to, to create a, a, a place, a, a symbol of, of grace. And God found righteousness and grace unto Noah, and I believe that you have a will, you have a purpose right now. The Bible is, is a great way to unlock your potential. I want to give you my story. When I was in high school, I, I went to meet you in high school back in 2005 or 6 or 7. When I was a teenager, I was working at McDonald's. I was mopping the floor. I was you know, doing different things. And I remember, I, uh, now I was new. In 2007, I was 17 years old. I, I asked God, I want to do something for the kingdom. I wanted to make a difference. 
I want to make a difference. Just like when Noah, it, it, he wanted to make a difference. And I remember two years later, 2009, I, I started ministry, which I was sent by the church, because I was 19 years old. And 2012, I was 22 years old, I started reconnecting ministry. And so Adrian Benson, we did Youth 101, and then we did the Apes and Little Movies. And then, and then just so on in my 30s, I, I started the church. Because the idea is to, to always listen to God guidance for your life. That's what you hear when you talk about Unagi. As well, guidance to the future. As well, because everybody has a purpose through Jesus. The Bible says, as well, in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, all these things were more than conquered to him that loved him. Noah was a man of conquest. Noah stands firm in the faith. Noah consistently listened to God's voice. As well, so let's go ahead and continue. Go ahead and continue reading. As well, we'll go point number four. I must, I must never give up on, on a dream that God placed in me. Every one of you, you can't give up on your purpose. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine. I asked my friend of mine, how would you feel if one day if I gave up? If one day if I left ministry, I left everything. You can have been out to decide to walk in the world. And my friend was Jared. It will disappoint a lot of people because they're a bigger influence. See, I learned not to give up. What God plants in your heart, a seed, it can be ministry, serving in the church, or helping a friend. It can be anything that God placed that seed in your heart to let it grow. So you see, it's called gifts. When God gives you a gift, you need to take care of your gift. Just like when, when a farmer waters a plant, you need to take care of that gift as well, because Noah was persistent, but we can never give up on the dream that God has for you as well. So remember this, everything takes longer what I think. So why Noah trusted God? Let's go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You know, I want to give you a quote and I want to show you a story, one of my, my favorite stories as well. Always remember, what, what is the art? The art is a symbol of salvation. The art is a symbol of salvation. Now, if you guys know the story about Titanic, the most greatest history, back in April, April, April 15, 1912, they all have the RNS Titanic, the most biggest ship in history. But we, we, uh, I want you guys to know there's a story about a man named John. John was an evangelist. John was a minister. So him and his daughter, they took a ticket to go into this boat of the Titanic ship because John was invited to go preach uh, in the, at the moving, moving church in Chicago. So every night, John did devotional, he put his daughter to sleep, and suddenly when the Titanic ship crashed into the iceberg, John took his daughter and rushed her to the lifeboat. It was very hard for him to, to put his daughter away. So he, he said goodbye, he kissed his daughter on the cheek, and goodbye. So John had the mission to go save people to Jesus. He went all over the Titanic ship sharing the gospel of Jesus, well, one time what happened, the boat, it, it sank into the ocean at the North Atlantic. John saw a man was drowning. So John swam. He pulled that man was drowning. He asked the man a question. You believe in Jesus? The man said, no, I don't believe in Jesus. Do the salvation prayer for me. So he did the salvation prayer. So he helped his man to get into the, the wooden, I guess it was a wooden finisher or something. And four years later, they had like a little seminar with all the survivors into the, you know, who survived in the Titanic ship. And, and so they were, they were going by name by name, you know, Captain James Edward, the people that played the uh, Near My God to Thee, you know, the violin. So one man stand up, you guys did not mention about a man named John, the evangelist. He helped me to find Jesus. And I believe, just like what, what John did in the Titanic ship, just like what Noah did in the ark. See, Noah kind of warned people to come before the whole flood was coming. The flood was coming, but Noah was persistent. Noah did not stay in the culture, just like the man named John. John was 
many people do before the, 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 the kind of the, the fellowship thing. Same thing with Noah. And I want to hear today, I want to share this message to you today. Are you saved? The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in the God who is from the dead, and you are saved. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, for God who demonstrates his great love towards us when we are sinners, Christ died for us. Are you saved? Are you saved? The Bible says, if your names are found in the Lamb Book of Life, you'll be cast in the lake of fire. You'll be cast. That the God has mercy and grace that love you. John 15, verse 13, that greater love of no one in this will lay down life for his friends. This is that that man named John who, who saved that man from Titanic ship. He died, uh, but yet the man that he was faithful that he got saved through the message of Jesus. And I wanna I wanna talk to you about today's message. Are you saved through Jesus? Are you found his grace in your life? We'll continue. Let's continue reading. Let's go to Genesis chapter six, verse eight. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. I wanna I wanna close this. You know, watching that story of Titanic about man named John uh, Samantha, I'll send you a link that we can watch a story on YouTube. You know, one of the things that really touched me of uh, watching this uh, this is a movie called A Night to Remember. It's a Titanic movie called uh, back in 1958. And what really touched me about this, about the band, about the violin, a man named John Wesley Woodrow was singing, Near My God to Thee, the, the final hymn the song before the, the Titanic ship, you know, went down in the water. And that song, it, it really penetrated my heart. I listened to it a few nights ago, but, you know, seeing the, the fear, seeing the, the and young people, I want to I wanna encourage you today, though, tomorrow's not promised. Next week is not promised. You got to repent. You got to confess your sin and take your heart to Jesus. Because Jesus can save you. It, it seems like you got to know about Donald Trump. When Donald Trump was doing uh, a rally, and he was, he was doing a speech into the uh, Pennsylvania, and this, somebody, some 20 year old, shot a gun in his ear. And four days later, Donald Trump did a, a speech. He said, By the grace of my Almighty God, I am here today. And I believe that God wants to save you as well. Amen. You guys receive that message today? Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Lord, as you continue to save people, you continue to help us and to guide us, Father. We know, Lord, that everything in this life that has a purpose. We want to say thank you, Lord, for all you do. Lord, we cry out to you. We're unworthy of your grace. But, but you, Lord, you continue to save us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. amen. Everyone, I want to say thank you for listening to this message. I am going to post that video of a story about a man named John, who was an evangelist, and, and you know, it's just a very, it's a story that just that really touched me, though, and join us, guys, when we're going to Genesis chapter 8 and Genesis chapter 9, we're going to talk about the rainbow, how God made a covenant that he's not going to flood the world anymore, and we'll talk about the dove and the raven, as well as in August 4th, we're going to do a Q&A, and now we, we also have the students here in my living room, we're going to do a Q&A for some students as well, reminder, I know some people ask me some questions. Don't worry, the you connection event is gonna be free. Everybody can go, um, you know, bring your family, your friends, your, your youth group as well. I'll be posting a uh, few videos on my youth connection page as well. So join us guys, so we're very excited about that. So thank you everybody and, and God bless you and have a wonderful week.